geeks shall inherit the earth. Hey pal, did you get a load of the nerd? Pardon me? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV nerds. For this list, we're looking at the best and most popular nerds in television history. These are the characters who are too smart for their own good, almost to the point of obsession, and may or may not lack some social skills. Now, grab your pocket protectors and your thick-rimmed glasses, and let's get nerdy. We cannot talk about this because someone might hear us. Number 10, Lisa Simpson, The Simpsons. Look at me, evaluate and rank me. Oh, I'm good, 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 and oh, so smart. Grade me. Nerds have it tough in their youth, and this poor genius is a perpetual eight-year-old. I've got some textbooks, but without state-approved syllabi and standardized testing, my education can only go so far. With her 159 IQ, sax playing, and attraction to all causes great and small, Lisa rarely fits in, even with her own family. My family never talks about library standards, and every time I try to steer the conversation that way, they make me feel like a nerd. Instead, she focuses on her studies and generally being a know-it-all. She sometimes found solace in groups like Mensa. You want me to join Mensa? Oh, that's wonderful. But Lisa's usually ostracized by her peers. In fact, she even researched why bullies are attracted to nerds to try to get them off her case. And though she's desperate for approval, Lisa stays true to herself, like any good little nerd should. Sit up straight, eyes forward, no talking. Is that gum? Is that gum? Is that gum? Oh, yeah. <sighs> Number nine, Elliot Reed, Scrubs. I'm Elliot. Elliot. Yeah, don't do that. Introduced as a cutthroat doctor who will step on her peers to further her medical career, Elliot is soon revealed to be anything but. I know it's hard to believe, but when I first got to college, I was a little bit of a dork, geek, good time Sally who gave it away for free. Dr. Reed is actually an open wound of vulnerability and self-doubt, who's buoyed by being the most studied in her class. Dr. Reed, can you help him out? I'd say it's superior mesenteric insufficiency. Though she enjoys the acceptance of a close-knit group of friends, Elliot can lack social skills, embodying many of the worst nerd stereotypes when she angers others through ignorance or lack of self-awareness. I'm probably Miss Hyper Competitive. I mean, it used to be a big problem for me. <laughs> used to. Past tense. But with her intelligence and loyalty, she also represents the best of the nerds. You don't still think that I'm neurotic, do you? Because that would make me so bummed. I mean, I thought that I'd done so much work Easy, with all the- Easy, Genji. Breathe, breathe. <sighs> Later. Number eight, Maurice Moss, the IT crowd. Oh, wicked. I know what this is. It's the new Harry Potter. I got the uh, child edition and the adult edition just to check that there are no differences in the text. As members of Reinholm Industries IT department, Moss and his cohorts are underappreciated workers banished to the basement to revel in anything but their actual work. Compiling a playlist for a role-playing game I'm hosting. Important to get the right at, Moss. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. Lacking a filter, Moss says exactly what's on his mind. But if you really want to arouse his anger, just disable the firewall on your company computer. Unbelievable, some brainiac disabled his firewall, which means that all of the computers on floor seven are teeming with viruses, plus I've just had to walk all the way down the mother fudging stairs <laughs> because the lift is broken again. Obsessive, uninterested in sports, and always prepared with an extra pair of glasses or a spray bottle to cool his left ear. <laughs> What's that? Oh, just water. Sometimes I get a hot ear, and this helps cool it down. Moss just seems to be your typical IT guy, and we love him for it. I want to go back to being weird. I like being weird. Weird's all I've got. That I'm a sweet style. Number seven, Ben Wyatt, Parks and Recreation. Start talking about nerd stuff. You know, nerd culture is mainstream now, so when you use the word nerd derogatorily, it means you're the one that's out of the zeitgeist. Yes, that's perfect. Just like that, be incredibly boring. When Ben first comes to Pawnee, nobody could have foreseen just how vast the depths of his nerdiness could be. We got some documents over at Entertainment 720 that seem really complicated, and I thought maybe you could take a look at them because nerd stuff probably really excites you because you're a nerd. No, of course, yeah, no, I'll just put on my Star Wars pajamas and sit in my mom's basement and pour over some spreadsheets. It sounds great. Yeah, wh wh what do you got? 
the department's resident accounting nerd, office workaholic, and unabashed writer of Star Trek fan fiction, Ben isn't your one-dimensional nerd. Hey, are you busy? And writing Star Trek fan fiction does not count. Ha ha ha. I we finished it last week. What's going on? He also loves calzones, spreadsheets, and, well, fellow nerd Leslie Nope. All I have on my side is facts and science. And people hate facts and science. Not to mention, he invented the cones of Dunshire. Are the cones a metaphor? Well, yes and no. Anyone who develops a game that's basically a combo of Risk, Settlers of Catan, and something with cones is a nerd in our books. Then you roll three dice to see how many dice you roll with. Oh, 16. Perfect. Lots of choices. Okay, each turn goes roll, buy, action. I mean, obviously this would be much taller in the real game. Number six, Annie Edison, Community. So, the key to winning this thing is when in doubt, Agree with Annie. That's sweet, Jeff, but everyone should just have fun. Then again, what's more fun than winning? <laughs> <laughs> An absolute type A personality. Annie, more often than not, is the driving force behind any actual academic work the study group she belongs to accomplishes. <laughs> <laughs> she is quite the little go-getter. And that's saying something, considering the other personalities she associates with, like the incredibly eccentric yet equally nerdy Abed Nadir. Does two UNs mean there are two Earths? Uh, yeah, sure, two Earths. Parallel Earths in different galaxies or identical Earths in parallel dimensions? The latter one. Well, what does that say about free will? Abed, professor. Right, yeah, let's begin. Her drive to succeed actually caused her to develop an Adderall addiction and fueled her breakdown. It's a serious disorder. It really is. But since this is a comedy show, you know it all works out. Surrounded by misfits and miscreants at Greendale Community College, this teacher's pet has found the perfect home for herself. We just figured out we had the same GPA in high school. Well, mine was higher if you consider my school's ranking. Well, it sounds like you had a lighter course load, so... Well, I was in a lot of clubs. I founded 17 of them. Well, I was actually thinking about founding a Model UN here at Greendale. Any interest? Number five. Leonard Hofstadter, The Big Bang Theory. I am an experimental physicist at Caltech. Most of my research is with high-powered lasers. And, oh, I've just gotten a big government grant to see if they can be used to knock out incoming ballistic missiles. Starting the show with a PhD and the patience of a saint, Leonard, though the most well-adjusted and social of his group of friends, is far from your average Joe. What are you, some kind of nerd? <laughs> Not some kind of nerd. I am the king of nerds. <laughs> What does that mean? Uh, it means if anyone displeases me, I don't help them set up their printer. Living in an apartment that is stocked with any young nerd's dream assortment of comics, toys, memorabilia, and games, this experimental physicist also somehow manages to get the girl too. Well, that was fun. Living with the brilliant Sheldon Cooper, who might have made this list were he not more defined by his lack of social understanding than his nerdly ways. Bazinga. Leonard is the Kirk of his group. Well, the holographic principle suggests that what we all experience every day in three dimensions may really just be information on a surface located at the farthest reaches of our cosmos. Number four, Chuck Bartowski, Chuck. Hi, Chuck. I heard so much about you. Are you in a costume? No, I, I, I work for the Nerd Herd. Nerd Herd? That is so cute. He was a computer hacker, but then a computer hacked him. Or something. Or spy Chuck? Yeah, more or less, yeah. Awesome. Beginning the series as a member of the Nerd Herd, Chuck's life takes a huge turn when he becomes a human receptacle of destroyed intelligence, a database known as the Intersect. I want the Intersect cube. I, I can't, I, I can't, I can't give you that. Oh, you'll find a way, I'm sure. Combining a lifetime's worth of knowledge about the minutiae of any number of pop culture topics. Zork. You remember Zork, the old text-based video game? Well, Bryce and I programmed our own version of it back at Stanford using a TRS-80. Wow, you guys are really cool. With the ability to access the lost information gathered by the CIA, Chuck is a nerd of the highest order. I did it. I, I defused a real bomb. <laughs> this is a real idea. <laughs> What if I was wrong? Don't puke on the C4. Huh? Number three, Dr. Spencer Reed, Criminal Minds. Yes, I'm a genius. A genius born with a 187 IQ and an eidetic memory. I, I don't believe that intelligence can be accurately quantified, but I do have an IQ of 187 and an eidetic memory and can read 20,000 words per minute. 
Dr. Reed's vast potential for information gathering seems to have been equally divided between criminal profiling and learning things like magic. Do you think that's why I can't get a date? You ever ask anyone out? No. That's why you can't get a date. Prone to obsessing about anything that catches his fancy, he uses his better-than-average brain capacity to become an expert on a multitude of things that escape the notice of most people. When I was between him and the doorway, he asked me to move. It's hypervigilance. It's not uncommon in post-traumatic stress disorder. All in all, he's a great example of the best aspects of nerddom, as well as some of the awkwardness and social ineptitude associated with it. Do you know why he always introduces me as Dr. Reed? Because he knows that people see you as a kid and he wants to make sure that they respect you. Number two, Bill Haverchuk, Freaks and Geeks. I, I don't get it. If you were to thumb through a yearbook from the 80s, you're bound to come across a couple of kids who are the spitting image of Bill. Don't judge a book by its cover. Tall and gangly with thick glasses and greasy hair, he seemingly can't be bothered to put any thought into his appearance. I can hear everything you guys are saying. Instead, he focuses on just getting through the day and the TV he loves, especially the bionic woman. I'm Jamie Summers, a bionic woman. Highly relatable and instantly lovable, there's something about Bill that just makes you want to protect and befriend him. Why does my mom always put a note in my lunch? It's so embarrassing. At least your mom doesn't write the note on the bag. <laughs> Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. It's not unusual to be This may come as some surprise to you, Jack, but I was kind of a lonely nerd in high school. And if I remember correctly, you were a good deal more. Uh-huh. Oh, 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 and by the way, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E means you are. Y-O-U-R means you're. That's why they had to get rid of the professor. He was the only one who could have spotted the fakes. You're confusing acceleration with velocity. You feel it when you first start going faster, but once you're up to speed, you don't even notice. I mean, right now, we're on a planet that's spinning at a thousand miles per hour. Number one, Steve Urkel, Family Matters. <laughs> I love that snort. <laughs> I love that giggle. <laughs> When this character debuted on Family Matters partway through the first season, Hi, Laura. the sitcom's title might as well have been changed to The Steve Urkel Show. Have no fear, the Urkman is here. A classic nerd, both in looks and in brains, Urkel's got the thick glasses, suspenders, and love of cheese to prove his geek cred. Klutzy and full of catchphrases, Can I do that? This lovable nerd is the neighbor you can't get rid of, who happens to be inventing God knows what in his basement. Uh oh, you've activated your new, new, new nuclear device. Ten minutes until a really big boom. Boom! Okay, Steve, we'll let you keep the accordion as long as you bust out the Urkel dance every once in a while. Now point your fingers up to the sky and pop through your nose way up high. Spin and dip and jump and cavort and finish it off with a laugh and snort. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with our list? I love it. Who's your favorite TV nerd? For more nerdtastic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. What if we dissolve the trust? Yes! You just cracked the case! I'm just doing my job. <laughs>